Okay, hello and welcome to our online chapter management and reach rewards webinar for advisors and chapter officers. My name is Paige Still and I am the membership services specialist for division three. We have some guests that are joining us today, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, first of all, I'm going to introduce Dr. Annie Tuttle. Dr. Annie, do you want to go ahead and tell us where you're from? Sure. I am the regional coordinator in New York, um, and I am the chapter advisor for Alpha Sigma Zeta at Onondaga Community College in Syracuse, New York. But I'm originally a Texan, um, but I live in New York now. Wonderful. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're able to join us today and to give us all of your brilliant knowledge on your chapter. And I'm going to go ahead and let my other panelists introduce themselves. Um, Monica, do you want to go ahead? Hi, I am Monica Bates, the Membership Services Specialist for Division One. Hi, I'm Erica Bold, and I'm the Membership Services Specialist for Division Four. Okay. okay, now we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, first I wanted to talk about the mission, of course, of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. The mission of Phi Theta Kappa is to recognize academic achievement of college students and to provide opportunities for them to grow as scholars and leaders. Okay, next I wanted to talk about how to plan your strategy for recruitment. Um, how to plan your strategy, of course, is to determine when you will acquire your list of eligible students. Plan information sessions for the semester. Also to set um, an induction date, time, and place that is best for your students. You can also coordinate with your chapter officers to develop a recruiting plan. I also wanted to talk about how to identify the eligible students. You would acquire a list of students who meet chapter eligibility requirements. Create access to Phi Theta Kappa that allows an opportunity for students and serves our mission. You would also review the membership elig eligibility portion of the revised Phi Theta Kappa International Constitution and bylaws and update your chapter's bylaws accordingly. Include your one year certificate associate degree and bachelor degree students. Review minimum eligibility criteria, 3.0 GPA across the board, six hours of credit for one year certificate students, 12 hours of credit for associate and bachelor's degree students. Okay guys, here's the big question that everybody always has. Okay, we always require you guys to upload eligible students. This is what we talk about constantly when you're contacting us. So a lot of you guys are new advisors. I know Division Four has a large amount, and I know that other membership services specialists can say the same for their divisions also. The way that you get the magic list that we always talk about, food, candy, anything, that's the number one way to get anything from anybody on your college campuses. Feed them with anything. But we suggest that you partner with your IT department, your institutional research department, the registrar's office. These are the top offices that will have all of the information needed in order to obtain an eligible student list. Now, we suggest that your list of eligible students should always be at least 10% of the students on your campus. So out of all of the students that you have currently enrolled each semester, once you obtain your eligible student list from the register or your IT department, and you look at your names, make sure that it's around 10% and that will give you a good eligible list of students to upload. Okay. Your eligible students should obtain, the list should all, it should be accurate. 
And when we say accurate, as you can see on the slide, full-time students, dual enrolled students. Dual enrolled students are students that may be attending your college, but they are currently high school students. So please include them if they meet your eligibility requirements for your chapter. Any major, we have a lot of students that now do technical or certificate programs, they can be included in your list of eligible students now. Part-time students, full-time parents, a lot of time go to colleges at night because they work full-time, they are eligible for Phi Theta Kappa as well. As long as they meet your hour, your credit hour requirement, and they have the GPA needed, and they're currently attending your college and taking courses, they're eligible. Okay, tips. Share your eligibility criteria with the appropriate department in advance. So when you go to your IT department with the candy slash peace offering slash bribe offering, let them know what you need exactly. You want all students that have A, B, and C, a 3.25 GPA that take at least six credit hours if they are technical or certificate program students or they take 12 credit hours for some chapters if they're pursuing an associate's degree. Whatever your eligibility requirements are, make sure that you make those clear to whoever is responsible for pulling the list because trust me, they will only do what you tell them, nothing extra. After you tell them exactly what you want them to do, once you get that information, make sure that the email address guys that you give us are the email addresses that the students use. A lot of colleges offer school email addresses. I had one advisor the other day that said that they uploaded a list. However, the students had activated their school email address. Well, their entire eligibility list contains school email addresses only. So if possible, please try to get the email address that the students have access to and that they check most often. Because when we send those email invites or when you guys send your own personal invitations to these students, you want to make sure that they're reaching them. If, they, if you give us an email address and they have no access or if you give us an email address that they do not check, most likely they will not accept membership. For colleges, I know that Virginia, West Virginia has FERPA issues. I have a few colleges in California that's experiencing FERPA issues also. Please contact us. We will try to do any and everything that we possibly can to work with you guys so that you can obtain an eligible student list and get those students uploaded. I have a chapter now that I'm currently working with and I know Monica has in the past had a few chapters that she's had to work with, with FERPA issues also. So just because you're, you're experiencing a FERPA issue, do not let it, I guess don't let it deter you from getting your eligible student list and don't feel down about it because there are other chapters that's experiencing the same exact issue. Okay, inviting, Prospective members. We at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters offer email invitations to chapters free of charge. Just let us know. We're here to help you. If you have the desire to upload, if you go and do a peace offering with whomever you have to do this peace offering with, we appreciate that. So we try to assist you guys as much as we possibly can, and this is one form of assistance that we offer. We offer chapters the option to have email invites sent from headquarters. Now, for those chapters that choose to send email invitations to their students, we love that. However, you can always have this as a backup or you can use them both. I have some chapters that send out email invitations letting students know that they met the eligibility requirements and then we follow up with email invitations from headquarters. I think Paige has a few chapters that may do that also, but this is something that we encourage. Along with that, we also offer snail mail letters. Those are just hard copy letters that students can receive in the mail. 
this is a great opportunity for your eligible students parents to see that they have met the eligibility requirements for Phi Theta Kappa and we have a desire for them to join. Oftentimes students see the email, they, you, we could send them an email from headquarters, you guys can work hard doing an email merge from your college and they still will not accept membership. So that snail mail letter is just something in addition to the email invitations. And it's also something that a lot of parents can see also and may encourage the student to actually join Phi Theta Kappa. Make sure that you guys have an enrollment period for each semester. This summer we held a tremendous summer recruitment campaign that we pushed here at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. Paige can attest to this. We had a lot of chapters that had never participated in summer enrollment and they chose to this year and they saw that it was a tremendous help to their membership numbers for their chapters. So beside Aside from the fall and spring semester, we encourage you guys to upload each open enrollment period. That allows you to increase your numbers and it also allows students to have the opportunity to accept membership into Phi Theta Kappa. Some chapters have some, I noticed they're hesitant to allow students to accept membership online. We encourage this. This takes away from so much on you guys from taking the payment from the student, getting them to fill out an application, then you have to submit the students to us. If you upload that eligible student list, allow us to send out invites from headquarters, we can send the students their passcodes directly and they can accept directly from the invitation. This is something that will free your time, it'll free a lot of pressure off of you guys and maybe will allow you all to do other things that will benefit your chapters. This also will give the student 24 seven access is immediate. Once they accept membership online, they can then access all of the benefits of Phi Theta Kappa immediately versus you guys waiting to get time to upload and then accept membership and then you have to notify the student that eliminates a lot of that. And as always, we ask that you contact us. Let us know. If you need assistance with something, send us an email, call us. Either way, you can do both. I accept emails and calls all day from advisors. I never have a problem with that. But if you do not communicate to us effectively what you are in need of, there's no way that we can help you. There's also other advisors, just as Dr. Annie Tuttle, she is an expert for the East Coast. Reach out to her. Her contact information is available on the website and I'm pretty sure she's available to answer any questions. I am, I wanted to jump in real fast and say that I think that sending emails before your invitations go out is really important because a lot of times on campuses, there are other honor societies that are not real honor societies. And so students get bombarded with these kinds of, of messages. And so it's really important that they learn that Phi Theta Kappa is legitimate. Um, and so if you can send out an email right when you find out who are your prospective uh, members, let them know they're going to be getting these emails, invitations, that kind of thing. Um, and it's really helped on our campus uh, with some of that confusion with the leadership and success um, society and, and a few other things. Also at our campus uh, we send um, invitations in the mail that are personally signed by our president or our provost and I think that parents in particular really love to open that invitation and see that oh wow this was signed by the president of the college um, and I think that that has gone a long way in helping us increase our numbers 
as well. And then finally, um, we even have our um, presidents include information about Phi Theta Kappa in the president's list and the provost list um, letters that go out. Students who earn a 4.0 or 3.7 to 4.0 in a particular semester make the president's list. And in that letter that's sent to their home, she mentions um, that they might be eligible to join Phi Theta Kappa. It has my email address and phone number. And I get a lot of phone calls <laughs> from students and emails about Phi Theta Kappa. Some of them are not eligible, but that's okay. It gives them something to strive for, um, but it helps us to get the word out and that students hear about it and they're like, oh, I want to join. When they get that invitation, they're much more likely to do so. That's a great point, Dr. Annie. And guys, you do not have to do step by step what Dr. Tuttle does with her chapter. She, it took time to build it up. <laughs> so everyone is not going to start out at the same level. Do as much as you possibly can with the resources that you have. We're here as a resource for you to use. Dr. Annie's ideas can be used as a resource. And eventually, even if you don't use all of our ideas, implement some of them a little bit at a time, do step by step, but never get encouraged as far as membership numbers go because there's always something that we can help you guys with or maybe run an idea by you that we heard another chapter try or just like Dr. Tuttle stated, she gave you ideas that she does at her college. So if you take piece by piece the information that we're giving you versus the information that she's giving you and put your own spin on it, then you'll see your membership numbers increase significantly. Okay, I just wanna remind everybody, we do have a Q&A box. So if you do have questions, Melissa and Erica will be answering those. So please ask those in the Q&A or the chat box. Okay, so we're gonna talk about recruitment um, the recruitment perspective for members. So I know, um, Annie, you probably do a lot of recruitment and you've just spoke about a little bit of that about how you do your invitations. So do you wanna talk about, do you guys have any tabling or recruiting events that you guys um, work at and have your members and your officers attend? Absolutely. Um, we have our open houses that the college puts on. We also have uh, a week uh, towards the beginning of the semester about all the different clubs and organizations on campus. And we make sure that our students um, have a table with those things to get the word out. Um, but one of the things that we do that really doesn't take much time is that on Mondays we wear PTK. So everyone who is a Phi Theta Kappa member is encouraged to wear their Phi Theta Kappa t-shirt on campus on Monday. Um, and that that helps get the word out. Ooh, that's a really good looking t-shirt. I want to know more about who, who that group is. Um, and that's helped a lot. Another thing that we do is that students, um, when they attend our induction, they get the free t-shirt. Um, and so that's an incentive to attend our induction ceremony. And we, on Mondays, see a lot of Phi Theta Kappa shirts around campus. Um, we also, in our suite, we're lucky enough to have a Phi Theta Kappa suite. It was not always like that. Um, we used to have just a little small room in the basement somewhere, <laughs> um, but we, we've been lucky to have a suite and now our students have office hours and so we um, tell our, our members or prospective members to stop by and talk to um, our leadership team and learn more about what Phi Theta Kappa is doing. That's awesome. I love on Mondays we wear PTK. I think I am going to petition for us to wear PTK on Mondays too. I know we do it on Fridays um, but for recruitment purposes, definitely feature current members front and center at all recruiting events. Let them tell their stories. Let those stories get out. That's what students relate to. They want to hear how Phi Theta Kappa help their fellow classmates. Um, they definitely want to hear those stories. They relate to them. Um, your induction ceremonies and your orientations and your info sessions acquire and develop marketable and transferable skills. Um, we do have on our website under the advisor section a recruitment toolkit. So you can definitely go there as an advisor and check that out. There's things that you can post on social media. We have different templates. There's things you can print off and you can have on your tables to display Phi Theta Kappa. So definitely check that out. And if you're confused on where to go, reach out to your membership services specialist 
and we will be happy to point you in the right direction so that you have all the supplies you need. And don't forget to appreciate your supporters on campus. So if you have supporters of Phi Theta Kappa, definitely appreciate them with little tokens and, and appreciations. We do have the stole of gratitude that we sell in the store that you can present to anybody who definitely supports Phi Theta Kappa. Well, I wanted to mention one quick thing again about the stories. I think you're totally right that um, people want to hear these success stories from Phi Theta Kappa. And we have partnered with our marketing team where almost every week it seems like one of our students is on our um, college website, meet, you know, Elena whoever, um, and it tells their story about why they joined Phi Theta Kappa, other things they do on our campus. And so it's really, they're usually wearing their Phi Theta Kappa t-shirt, <laughs> which helps us get the word out too. Um, but it really helps highlight these amazing students. And again, it's another way to spread the word about Phi Theta Kappa and get people excited about it. Also, Dr. Tuttle, we have a question, um, will a request actually, asking if you could send your president's letter to us here at headquarters so that they can see an example of what communication your president has with others, okay? Sure. Let me Thank add you. that to my to-do list and I'll Thank send you. that right now. Cool. I'll Thank be happy you. to do that. Awesome. And, and I think you have Ariel's address. If you want to send it to her email, then she can share it with us if that's how you want to send it. I It'll don't take think a couple days because I get a copy of it, but I will get that right over okay. to you. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide here. Okay, so sample ideas for recruitment. Definitely participation, as we were just speaking about, participate in Phi Theta Kappa Awareness Week. Wear those t-shirts, have those tabling events. I know, um, do Facebook Lives. Do an event where you go Facebook Live with your chapter page. Um, I saw a chapter once do that where they were all in a group. They were wearing their Phi Theta Kappa chapter t-shirts, and they were throwing out um, trivia questions about Phi Theta Kappa and getting people to stop on campus to answer the questions. And they were throwing smarty candies to the people who got the answers right. And these people knew the answers to Phi Theta Kappa. So it was just sharing what PTK was on campus. So definitely participate in PTK Awareness Week. Also campus organization fairs and other events. Show up at those events, have those um, t-shirts and the recruitment items definitely displayed and community partnerships and service projects. So the more that you're out in the com community, the more that people are aware what Phi Theta Kappa is. And when they get their invitation, they will know what your group and your chapter is, and they'll definitely want to accept. Um, okay, I have a few questions for Annie. Um, I know your foundation, you have some things set up with your foundation where they pay for a majority of the membership fee for students. This is a huge goal I think a lot of chapters would love to obtain, and they just don't know how to do that. Can you talk about how you went to your foundation and asked them or helped them come up with the idea to help sponsor students or pay for their portion of their membership? Sure, right. Um, when I joined Phi Theta Kappa as an advisor, the previous contact advisor had a host of issues on our campus with Phi Theta Kappa. We had a different president than we do now. Um, so definitely the administration matters whether they're supportive um, or a little bit less supportive. And so we were unable to see our budget. We didn't ha know our numbers, that kind of thing. So we started asking, how can we learn about what we're doing, how much money we have to use, this kind of thing. That led us to um, talk with the board of trustees um, and giving sort of uh, having a meeting about how we can um, make our chapter stronger because it's not just about having a strong chapter. We want students to get the most out of their Phi Theta Kappa membership. And so they told us to go to the foundation and we went to the foundation, told them what Phi Theta Kappa was, how it was so beneficial. Um, and we were able to have the foundation um, buy in to, to what we were saying. And they now um, have found a donor that helps or that 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 pays for um, almost all of the um, the 
the fee to join. Our students only have to pay $11, uh, which is really uh, so awesome because so many of our community college students don't have a lot of money. And so being able to join for just $11. Um, so we made those personal connections with the foundation. And um, I personally was not the person who went and had that conversation, um, but um, I'm, if anyone would like to know how, exactly how that happened, please contact me. Um, I'm happy to work with you and um, give you ideas and kind of talk with you individually about what our process was. Um, and luckily, now that the foundation sees uh, what we're doing and how we're really impacting students' lives, we've just now gotten another donor who is going to be purchasing um, stoles for every Phi Theta Kappa member so that each PTK graduate at our campus uh, will be able to have that regalia free of charge. Um, and so we're really, really excited about that. Um, it's definitely helped our chapter that we've been really engaged, a five-star chapter doing projects um, that are very visible on our campus. We go to our board of trustees meeting once a year. We go to our um, Onondaga Association meeting every semester and show them what we are doing. We've gone to this conference, we've worked on this project, this number of students won scholarships, our All USA, the list goes on and on. And so they see that we're doing things. And I think that that has helped um, us to get that kind of support. That is absolutely amazing. I know I was at the Wisconsin Regional Meeting a few weeks ago and that was one of the questions that a lot of colleges wish they could have a foundation that could support membership fees. They just, some don't know where to start. And I'm so happy you're willing to share your idea. Thank you so much because that is such a goal a lot of chapters try to obtain um, is just having a little bit of help on that membership fee for those students, just to increase that membership get them to recognize the first part of our mission that Monica went over with was recognition for our students to be honor students for Phi Theta Kappa members. So moving right along, thank you for that information. Well, what I'll do is I will go and talk to the person who actually went and had those conversations oh. and I'll, I'll maybe write up a little handout about kind of to do's and that way we can get something shared hopefully in the next month or two. That's amazing and we will share that with all of the divisional specialists so if you when you get that to us definitely reach out to your divisional specialist specialist and we will be happy to share you share with you whatever Dr. Tuttle gives to us on how to talk to somebody at college to find sponsorship or membership fees for your students. That's amazing. Um, another way to do recruitment is display your chapter charter plaque. This is the plaque that you received when your chapter was first chartered. So it might be relatively old or it may be relatively new. So I know a lot of chapters have a display case on campus and they tend to put their charter plaque in their display case with their Hallmark Awards, definitely have somewhere where you can show off your achievements. And yes, just having a chapter plaque, a charter plaque is an achievement because you're college decided to have Phi Theta Kappa on campus. So definitely display that. Um, also announce, so involve supportive faculty and involve current members and officers in tapping. Now something that is tapping, and not a lot of campuses can do this because of FERPA issues, but um, if you can get away with it, where you go and have your chapter officers have some of the eligible students um, on a list and you see what classes they're in go to their class and tap them on the shoulder. And then they turn around and they can kind of hand them an invitation and say, please join Phi Theta Kappa. And then that gets people going, what's Phi Theta Kappa? Oh, you're an honor student? Why haven't you joined already? Let them see that this is something special and encourage them. And something to, some way to do that is to tap them on the shoulder and hand them an invitation to get them interested and get their peers interested and their, their professors. Let them say, you were invited to Phi Theta Kappa, you should really join. So definitely look for different ideas to announce that um, students are eligible. And then we also talked about the tabling, set up attractive displays, info booths in a busy common area. If you have digital displays um, on your campus, we have things that you can put up there to kind of get that word out about Phi Theta Kappa in your chapter. Definitely look on our website under our recruitment toolkit we have things that you can display on that and definitely get people, catch people's eye about what Phi Theta Kappa is. They'll look at that and say, hey, I think I got an invitation to that. So definitely set up some things in a common area and hand out Phi Theta Kappa recruitment cards. We have them 
in the store. If you need more, you can definitely order them. They're free of charge. We just have them in the store for easy access for the advisor to go in there, click on how many you need, add it to your cart, and complete order, zero dollar charge. We send them right to you. We just have them in the store to help us keep count for the inventory so that we don't run out. But they are free of charge for you. So you can just go in there and simply get as many as you need for any event you may have. And so you can hand them out um, to the students. Okay, I can't see, let me move this. Okay, so and then the emails, the invitations from the college president, as we talked about, the chapter officers, um, also do email invitations from Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. And then we have advisors who write up their own invitation. I have a lot of chapters who send out their own, as Annie said earlier, send out your own communication beforehand, letting them know something will be arriving where they can accept membership and join, giving them a heads up, and then send out another follow-up. Uh, we have data that is proven. It takes about three to seven touches for students to accept membership. So that means usually those students are accepting their membership after they are, have received their seventh invitation. And they are joining online between the hours of 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. You're not in your offices during that time. So these are students who are up late studying for their tests and their exams. They put the babies to bed. They pack lunches for the next day. And they're finally able to say, you know what? I got an email invitation. Let me finally sit down and accept my membership. And that may be at 3 a.m. So, you know, we are seeing this trend. Um, so definitely make all access available for these students with these email invitations so they can accept. And then, like Annie said, follow up with other communications, send a letter, send something from the college president, just keep touching them because they are ignoring some things or saying, I'm going to wait till later. We're all procrastinators. It's human nature. So definitely reach out. Don't be scared. Definitely remind them, you know, definitely say, make sure you accept this invitation. It's quite important. Okay, so. Let me see what the next slide. We're going to yeah, talk about some more little idea for recruitment. Yes, absolutely. Um, something that we do on our campus is that we have created campus benefits to join. Um, so not just the benefits of money and, and scholarship and that kind of thing. Um, so what we've done on our campus is that Phi Theta Kappa members get priority registration. So regardless of where they are in their um, college journey, they get to register for their classes the first day that registration opens, which is a humongous perk to make sure that students get the courses and times and professors that they want. So we have created that campus benefit. Also, they get benefit to, uh, access to our PTK lounge. Uh, we have a conference room and a lounge that only Phi Theta Kappa and honor students um, can, can go into. So we've created those perks. And I think another strategy is at those tabling events, um, have the scholarship information for some of the top transfer institutions that your students are going to. Syracuse University is probably one of ours. Um, and so we make sure that, you know, we tell students, you know, if you join, you're going to get $2,500 a semester just for being a Phi Theta Kappa member, not for being an active member, but just for being a member. And so it makes them say, oh, then this, you know, $11 in our case, but $80 or whatever is going to be a good investment. Um, and so those have been some tricks that, that have worked for us that might work for you. I love those ideas. Definitely give perks on campus for being a member. I mean, even if it means having, you know, a lounge. And don't you do pizza, monthly pizza, Annie? Oh, you're muted. We do, uh, we do pizza at our meetings. Um, sometimes we will do like a end of the semester breakfast during finals week. Um, so just a few fun things that, that get students to, to come and engage in our chapter. Yes, engagement, food brings them, like Erica said earlier. If you have food, they will come. So that's fantastic. Okay, we're gonna move right along. I know everybody's busy and we've got things to do today. So we're gonna keep going. This is a wealth of information. This is such great information to share. Um, we just definitely wanna talk about REACH rewards. So REACH rewards are designed, uh, it's a program designed for chapters focused on recognizing excellence and acceptance and completion with honors. So we're calling it REACH Rewards. So the REACH Rewards program will encourage membership by rewarding chapters who achieve or exceed 
um, for their membership acceptance rate. And we had over 400 chapters achieve REACH in 2017. So REACH Rewards is based on one year's worth, so it's a calendar year from January to December, of enroll, total enrollment of students and how many accept um, from your eligible pool. So we calculate that and we come up with the REACH Rewards point system and then you get your percentage and those are emailed to you at the beginning of the next. So this year will be counted and then next year in the spring you will receive, receive your results and if you achieved REACH you will get your STOLs and the STOLs are um, given out based on chapter size and if you feel you get your REACH Rewards score and you feel it's not right which it may not be, you can definitely reach out to your divisional specialist and we can give you an appeal form and you just have that filled out and send it back to us and then we recalculate your reach rewards. So definitely don't feel like what you get is set in stone. You can definitely have a form filled out and submit that in. So definitely earn that reach rewards, get those free stoles to help those students. Okay. So why reach for reach? Well, we just spoke about earning the reward of free PTK stoles for graduation and more students will experience membership benefits. So the exclusive scholarship opportunities, leadership development skills, cultivate essential soft skills. Definitely work on those soft skills. We have competitive edge program that students can start and work on at their own pace that can help them once they've finished their college career and they're ready to go into the working world and they need to work on resume skills and working as a team and different elements for the working world. And you can earn recognition as part of Phi Theta Kappa community of scholars and you have an increased student engagement persistence, retention, and completion. So all wonderful things for achieving REACH. Also, when you're working at getting your REACH rewards, not only are you encouraging and recruiting more members, but when you're recruiting and you just reach and get a little further with more members, you have more members who are willing to participate and be more leadership skills and to run for your chapter officer positions and really be engaged with your chapter. So the more students you have for that, the better your chapter will be able to perform and have better engagement. And then you can go to your college president and your faculty members showing what your chapter's done and ask for more money. Ask for that, that membership fee assistance that Annie was talking about earlier. That, that's, that's a wonderful goal to set. And Reach Rewards can help you get there. Okay, so I know we have some questions that Erica and Melissa have been answering. And then, Annie, do you have anything else you'd like to add um, to let these advisors and these chapters know great ideas on recruitment or any ideas that you may do as a chapter? You know, when I started with Phi Theta Kappa, we had three active members, and <laughs> that, that was it. Um, and now we have, we had our biggest leadership team of 19 students. We have about 50 or so who are actively um, participating. And I think what has helped the most is that we really make our induction ceremony special. Our college president is there as well as our provost. She shakes every person's hand. Um, we have the, the music department come and plays the piano and sings and it's a really special evening. It's, it's an hour, you know, um, but during the induction ceremony, um, we make sure and tell all of those members who are just joining exactly what we're doing, the awards we're winning, um, the scholarships that our students are, um, are are winning um, and ways that they can participate. And so right after induction, I put a call out to anyone who's interested in being on our leadership team and while it's fresh in their mind. And so it really has encouraged so many students to uh, choose to be exceptional. And we tell students, you know, it's awesome to be a Phi Theta Kappa member, but choose to go even farther and become that engaged member, the officer, the regional officer. Um, to, to get the most. So I think that use that induction ceremony. You've got a captive audience, <laughs> so to speak, um, to really try to get those engaged students um, to, to participate and, and work to make your chapter even stronger. Um, so I would say that, that definitely use that induction ceremony. Um, and we also invite our foundation to the induction ceremony. So we always have a foundation representative there who gets to see all of the, the students that their the money is, is going going towards. Um, and we also do um, 
honorary induction. So anyone on campus um, who has played a vital role in our, our chapter um, can get an honorary membership um, that inducted. And so we've had, the, of course, the foundation <laughs> inducted as, the, uh, as a member um, and, and tons of other people. So, so use that induction ceremony. That's a great idea. Definitely use that. And I like your idea about the honorary memberships. Definitely, they're only $10. The advisor can go on the website under our form section and you can submit an honorary membership for $10. And then if you want to um, present them with a pin, a membership key pin, you can pay for that for $12. So honestly, you can get them a membership and then we send the certificate to the advisor who submitted the form and you can present that to somebody and honor them with membership at the induction ceremony. And it is quite special and it, it's just an amazing momentum for um, showing appreciation and, and keeping Phi Theta Kappa going through your campus. So that's a wonderful idea. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Erica, do we have any questions that maybe we can address or do you think we're doing pretty good? I think we're doing pretty good. The hot topic is Dr. Annie Tuttle. Would you please share your email address <laughs> with us so that we can send it to all of our panelists and attendees? Sure. It's Tuttle, T-U-T-T-L-E-A, at SUNY, S-U-N-Y, O-C-C dot E-D-U. Tuttle A at SUNY, O-C-C dot E-D-U. If you just Google Annie Tuttle, New York PTK, I'm on the New York PTK regional website. Um, you'll know it's me because my picture's there. Um, <laughs> so you'll be able to find me pretty easily. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, Erica, anything else? I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Well, you guys, you did wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing such great information. Our contact information is as well on the screen. So if you want to talk to us, definitely reach out to your divisional specialist and we'll be happy to address anything or answer any questions that you have. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, we hope you can recruit and get those members going with your chapters. Thank you so much. Thanks guys.